everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, happy Mother's Day and Motherly's Day. So um, we're going to, yeah, it's about 2 o'clock. Um, we just had some small technical issues right before. I usually come on a couple minutes early, but today um, Miss Not Technical Lady right here had the, I couldn't paste something and then I turned the phone. So whatever. We're here now. That's all that counts. And uh, here's my Mother's Day shtick. Um, and I, I have notes for everything now, okay? So I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all women who birth children, and Happy Mother's Day to all humans who have mothered. Never replacing mom. However, there are a million scenarios out there, like um, military moms who are away, first responders moms who are away, quarantine moms who are away, incarcerated moms, foster moms, deceased moms. There are all of the and scenarios that I can't even um, I can't even write in my notes right now. Um, but there's times where where dads and grandma and aunts and siblings and cousins and, and neighbors, um, there are all of these people who have nurtured a child. And, and believe you me, it takes a village to raise a child um, because I'm one of them. <laughs> so I, on that note, I would like to wish my mother a happy Mother's Day. And also um, to, to my high school art teacher, because back when I was in high school, I just started high school, and these two crazy women agreed that Mrs. Turkheimer, my high school art teacher, would take me to life drawing classes when I was 15 years old. My art teacher would pick me up, take me on Thursday nights, and, and I, I started drawing like in real classes. And my mother somehow came up with the money to pay as she was a single parent raising three kids. And that's what started my amazing world of art. And if I eat and sleep and breathe it. And if I don't paint in a couple of days, uh, people know. <laughs> so I, I have to keep my hands moving always. Um, so happy Mother's Day and happy Mother Mother these days to anyone who has nurtured a child in any way, shape, or form. So um, cheers. Okay, so today I want to just recap last week. So if you've missed it, um, it's on Facebook. You can re-watch it, but we read about Tar Beach, and it's, it's about family spending time together and I'm sure many of you children out there you have spent a lot of time with your families and some days are better than others some days are awesome rainy days are long <laughs> long for the parents and for the caregivers um, so we read this book and then um, we also did like shadow play and we made a shadow box out of uh, a Kleenex box which I will show you, but I don't want to keep turning the lights on and off and on and off. There's curtains, there's lights, there's chairs, there's a lot of things going on here. So um, I don't, I don't want to, I, you know, I don't want to mess with the with the gods of tech technical stuff. Uh, so we'll turn the lights off once. I'll show you the shadow box, and then we're going to talk about our artist, and we're going to kind of get right into this. Okay, I think. I think we're good. Um, all right, so our first artist, I have all of my notes here. Um, the, my first artist is Kara Walker. And I remember seeing her work at the Guggenheim. I didn't know much about her. And, and her work grabbed me from across the room. And it's all silhouette. And it's, it's just this marvelous work. And then when I get closer and I see what it is, it's very, very powerful, powerful stuff. And she, to me, I think she is a very brave artist. She makes art that shows the world about bullies. Hopefully her work teaches people's hearts to live more with love. Today we are going to make silhouettes of our, of our future decision makers. That would be you, all of the children. Decision makers who, who lead with their hearts. The world can use more love. Right. And uh, 
Okay, how does she do that? Her, her, her technique and what she uses is the silhouette. So it's all silhouettes. What's a silhouette? Silhouette is a French word and it's usually a solid black color, usually, um, but we can have color. And um, it's with its edges matching the outline of the subject. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to kind of turn off all of the lights and we're going to close the curtains and Chris is going to sit. He's got to turn his phone on. We have uh, some at home. If you're doing this at home, um, it's easier for you because you don't have these kind of constraints that we have here. All right. So uh, lights out. Here we go. When I mark the floor, we do this at the Art Students League with models, and Chris is my model, so we kind of tape the floor uh, so we know where the chair is going to go. So we know where the chair is going to go. This is still a little light. Maybe you can hold that with your hands. Okay, Chris is going to sit, and I'm going to trace his profile. So uh, basically, you want his head to kind of fit on the top and the bottom of the paper. So I see his outline here. Good, thanks. And we have the beginning, okay? Oh, while it's still dark, sorry, I wanted to show you one thing. If you could turn that light off. This was last week when we made the shadow puppets. I can move the chair. And I can also bring it very close. But the light kind of goes in the back. It's a tissue box. You can reference the other video. And uh, yeah, so here is my hand. And we made little puppets, which uh, I have right here. Sorry. Okay. But this is a whole bunch of fun. And there's our little shadow puppet, if you could see. Okay, cool. Okay, lights on. Thanks. And Chris has taken his phone out, and um, because we're because we're home, and I'm not at the league, I don't I don't have access to another tripod. And even if somebody mailed us a tripod, it might have been small. So I, I do have to share with you what we put his phone in so, so we can film this. Um, so, so Chris's phone went in the fire truck and we have a bucket here. And we duct taped the bucket so it wouldn't move and the phone goes right in there. So uh, maybe as parents and children that you can be super resourceful about how to do this. And if you don't have the phone, you can use a lamp, you can use sunlight. I, I tried to do this with my three-year-old, and um, I would have to say, it doesn't necessarily work. It doesn't necessarily work because I had him sitting down, I went to trace his profile, and every time I traced his profile, he'd move his head. And I said, put it back, he'd move his head, I put it back. And so, um, this, <laughs> this is the work that happens when you keep moving. So there's a key element that when a model is posing, and that would be the child, and the child can do also draw the caregiver or the parent, you can do the entire family. Um, but you do have to stay still because otherwise you, you get this beautiful work instead of this beautiful work, okay? Um, it was very, it was funny, but it doesn't make for a great silhouette. That's what it doesn't make. Okay, so now let's talk about paper and supplies for your silhouette. Um, ideally, if you have, you have your black paint, and you can just paint in. I don't know if, that, if that's clear. So I just used the black paint, and I painted uh, Chris's profile. That's option one. Option two, uh, I tried different methods. So this is um, with coffee, and it just, it's if you're into more subtle, um, I'm not, I'm not very subtle. 
but if you like subtle, then this would work for you. So I brewed coffee with um, like just less amount of water, but if you're using a Keurig, you have to have a certain a certain amount of water in there for to work. So instead, I just I have a, a recycle coffee thing, you know that that you put the coffee in. I don't use the K cups, and I just put that inside my coffee cup to make it darker. So it's it's more it's this is uh, brewed and dropped in my K cup, and I guess the longer it's in there, the darker it gets. That's an option. Um, what if you don't have that stuff? And please. For Mother's Day, do not go and use your mother's coffee or your caregiver's coffee. It's vital that you ask permission. It's really important, okay? Um, I do have my trusty, where did it go? So here's this, I don't want to use that one. I have another, oh, here's this profile. Okay, so this is on watercolor paper. But if you don't have watercolor paper, other options. Which, uh, you know, the three-year-old came and took everything. So I'm back with scissors. Okay. So I'm just going to cut his profile out. This is on regular printing paper. Although I have heard other humans use the word Xerox, which, which is one of my favorite ways to describe white paper. Okay, so you can just kind of, and if this, the younger children need help cutting, you just kind of cut it for them, or, you know, you cut, and they can cut apart, however that works. So, all right, so I'm cutting. Oh, Chris did not put his phone on, do not disturb. All right, um, here's his profile. This is my trusty wrapping paper. You can put his face on the wrapping paper on top and that creates a nice profile. You can get a little crazy and you can use the stripes and you could just glue it or tape it, whatever. Um, the wrapping paper I've had in the house for a while. I have a, a shopping bag. It's been in the house for a while. Please do not use recent items that you've brought into your home. Let's, let's be smart and safe, okay? Uh, you can use a paper bag, that works as well. And you could reverse it, you know, if you wanna trace the white and then use the brown for his face on the white paper, that's, that's an option too. Um, this is reversible wrapping paper. You could do one with the stripes and then you could do, you know, like you can, Depends on how much wrapping paper you have. I'm running out of the blue. Um, I can cut, instead of it being white, I can cut his profile out of the blue paper, and cut another sheet, and then put it on the striped paper. So there's many, many options. Uh, one of my favorite options is, I don't know if you've ever worked wet into wet. If you don't have paint, here is another option, and that is this option here. So you just kind of take water. This is on the watercolor paper. It's not suggested to do on the printing paper because when that paper gets wet, it's like the, it's like the paper towel commercials. It gets weak. It's not as strong as this is, right? So I wet it just with water, nothing fancy, folks. Just plain old H2O. And it's gonna be a little hard to do this because you need to do it flat. But if I do it flat, then you kind of won't be able to see it. So I, I'm not gonna do it flat. So there's my water. And then what I did was, I added food coloring. So just put a drop here, a drop there. Okay, the second I raise this up for you because it's not flat, it's going to run on me. So your work needs to really be flat. I'm trying to get the blue because I want purple. Okay. And just so you know that the food coloring will stain, so do not wear nice clothes. It stains everything. Put something down on your table. Okay, so then 
if you can see, oh, you can manipulate it a little. Um, and then if it does run over, you can always cut out the profile. But you can manipulate the water. If it runs off the page, it's going to run off the page. It's more important for me to show all of you. So you can just kind of move it. And you don't put the water past his profile. See, it did run off the page. And that's how we made this one. So I don't want this um, food color everywhere, and neither do you. So my pro tip is what uh, Genevieve says. My pro tip is work flat and also wait till it dries. If you don't wait to, for it to dry before you pick it up, again, it's going to run all over everything, and it, it'll probably stain stuff. So be careful. If you don't have paint, food dye is probably... Uh, works better for the older children, eight, nine, uh, five-year-old. You're going to have to supervise and just, you know, maybe go outside in, on the in the backyard or a stoop or, um, you know, put something down on on like my uh, my tablecloth, the birthday tablecloths, the plastic ones. They're perfect. Uh, okay. All right. So be careful with the wet ones. So done with that and this and this. Okay, and this. Now we're going to move on to Romare Bearden. Oh, I made these signs. That's Kara Walker, right? Kara Walker. I didn't use her sign, sorry. I made it and I left it there. And now this is, we're going to work on Romare Bearden. And Romare Bearden does collage work. Let me get my notes on him. Okay. So, Romare Bearden was an artist and his studio was at 306 West 125th Street. He was also a founder of the Studio Museum in Harlem, and both are about 15 minutes from my house. In 1960, Romare Bearden made many collages of his neighborhood, family, and friends. So today, we are going to make a collage of you, your family, a favorite place that your family goes. Okay, so. Where are the images going to come from? Uh, you can use a photo. When I was younger, I probably cut up every photo we had in the house. I drove my mother crazy. I don't know what it was, but I needed to cut, cut people out of their photographs. Um, you know, just their kind of their silhouette or outline. I'm consistent. <laughs> so you can use a photocopy of a photograph. Like if you have a, a printer that's an all-in-one thing, we have that. I just, I'm not really good at working it. You can print an image from your phone. Um, you can, if you have, you're using photographs and someone has kind of left the earth and is up in the heavens, then maybe you can use that use a photograph of that person and we can like um, make a drawing or you can make a photocopy. Or you can ditch all of that and you could use your imagination. What if you don't have access to all of that? It's fine. Um, you just kind of work from what you, the, you know, if you had a camera in your head and you clicked your ear and you took a photograph of that moment using your brain, what is that going to look like? Okay, so now I'm talking about collaging, but what paper for collaging? Um, you could use the same. You could use the paper bag that's been in your house for quite some time, uh, nothing recent. You can use the same thing with the newspaper. You can use something that's been here for a while. You can use, uh, this is wrapping paper. My mom did social distancing and she dropped off um, some treats for me this morning. And we kept separate, uh, so some wrapping paper. Or uh, I have post-it notes, they're colored. Now what if none of that's working for you? Oh, my trusty wrapping paper again. If none of that is working for you, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Eric Carl. And even if you don't know his name, you know his book, maybe, and it's The Hungry Caterpillar. And Rudy, I think, is going to add a link um, of watching uh, Eric Carle, because I don't know if you know this, but he makes his own paper. 
these, this is all collage work that he has kind of cut out, and you'll see it in the video. But if you see all the lines in the sun, that's because he painted his own paper. If, uh, so I did a few with the three-year-old this morning, with Robert this morning, and I have those right here. So this is uh, his, and this is mine. Um, we're not looking for perfection. We're not looking for perfect art. We're looking for like an experience or a moment that you have with your family. We're looking for some time that you just kind of sat at the table and you unplugged from an electronic device. Maybe you just kind of, maybe you plugged in some music though, <laughs> but you weren't watching something you weren't passively watching something you were you were getting those hands moving so we're not looking for perfect we're looking for um just a nice kind of time making art um, and it, what if you don't have paint i use markers i did all of this with markers i just took any marker out of my trusty old marker bag that we have here and i just kind i kind of make uh colors on the paper um if you have, uh, maybe you don't have the tempera, but you can use the watercolor. Um, okay. And then, it, what are you going to use for glue? I have here, I have uh, Elmer's glue wall, right? But if you don't have white glue, uh, there should be a link where you can Google it. If you, if you mix uh, cooked rice and some water, you can make like a glue paste and that'll work too, and that is totally edible if you have a younger one and they decide to eat it, even though this is non-toxic. Um, I'm sure rice and water might taste better than a little glue in case it, a little gets in someone's mouth, okay? So we just want, want to be safe about that. So, Romare Bearden's work, and I like this piece, he was, he was really into jazz and, uh, and music, and and I've seen some videos uh, online with kids making music. And if music is important in your house, then make a collage of music. Sure, why not? Um, make a, make, maybe make a collage of a, a place that you went and you heard great music. Um, for me, if anybody had to make a collage of, of, of uh, if Robert had to make a collage of his mom, it would be in front of an easel, maybe. You know, I don't, I don't know, but... That's what I do. Um, so it could be a, a, a place that you go to, too. So I have a collage that we made. Oh, no, th first let me do this one, then I'll do the other one. So this is, this is Robert. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and I, I just printed this from my phone, and then I cut out, where's the scissors go? Okay, I got kid scissors now. Apparently, I had two scissors on the table. So, and I, I watched Eric Carl in the video. He did this too. Uh, Romier Bearden. He cut out uh, pictures of uh, people, maybe in the newspaper. So sometimes Romier Bearden had color on his paper, but some of the collage material maybe were from the newspaper and they were black and white. Uh, what, whatever you want, you can do. But please ask permission before you go around cutting something, okay? I got in a lot of trouble for that, cutting all the photographs in the house. Don't just go around cutting photographs. That's not, not good times. Okay, so here he is. And then what I did was you kind of can cut parts. So when I traced him, we're going to work on the back of Chris's. You can, oh, watching the time, okay? I don't know where the time goes. I cannot believe we have just a couple of minutes left. Okay. So he fell on the floor. Robert, back up, okay. Here he is, he's back up. So um, you can kind of, I just wanted you to see see the idea about the tracing and and if you need to place where his head is I, I cut prior to tracing 
and you could trace like that. Now this is part of Chris, but you can see what we did. <laughs> They're very cute. So that's his head. This is green construction paper. And this was the chair in the original picture. If I put these two together, you see part of the chair. And I like the lines, so I continue with the lines. And then, um, because it snowed in New York in May, yesterday, that why not have some snowflakes with everything going on? Why not have some snow, right? Okay, so then I made one more collage. So if you don't have photographs of people, you can always do a place, and it could be from your memory. So let me go here. <laughs> so at the beginning of April, it also snowed. So this is upstate New York, where my husband's family has had a place for, since 1969, I think. And um, so this, is, this was us sledding, or what do you call it, Chris? Uh, snow riding? <laughs> or sledding, as, as almost all of us call it. But apparently new technology, it's called, what is it? Snow riding. Snow riding. There's a tip for you right there. So um, I like this of, uh, this is my stepdaughter and my stepson and Robert. This is my cameraman. And um, so I cut them out and I kind of just made a collage like that. So it added the black and white like Romeo Bearden. Um, so it's the use of some newspaper. Now you can make this as simple or as complicated as you want it. If you're working with children who are more the age of five, four and a half, then you can just cut out simple shapes. You know, you can, and you can add other, like instead of this one, like maybe if you're five or a four-year-old, then maybe you just cut out a circle, and it doesn't have to be his face. You can cut out a circle, and you can add, and you can work with shapes. Here you go. Circle, circle, triangle for the nose, and maybe like kind of a, a rainbow boat shape for the mouth. Maybe it's just a rectangle. And for the older kids, you can get you can get really complicated. Like Romeo Spearden, I mean... I have tape on everything. Look at that work. It's got he's got the guitar here and like horn section and the drums. So you can really I don't know. Sorry. There you go. There's no light shining through it. You can make it as complicated or as simple as you would like. You can make a couple. Uh, you can work smaller. You don't have to work this size. Uh, so. On that note, and time-wise, I think that's about our, our half-hour mark. This is another one. This is more paper we made this morning, and I, and I cut out a heart. Very cute. Um, so next week, what are we doing next week? Jackson Pollock, Helen Frankenthaler, and Bob Blackburn. The idea for next week is that you're making artwork without directly having a brush touch the paper. So we're gonna kind of pour in it. What I did was um, <laughs> I took the rack out of the toaster oven and then I put like a, a pan, like a, you know, a cake pan underneath. So when we do pour and when we do drip the paint that it's not all over the place. And um, Bob Blackburn was a printmaker and so some of the work, if we're just going to put a piece of paper on, and we're going to make monotype, um, mono, monotype, monoprint of, of whatever paint is, is there. So, um, yeah, I'm so looking forward to next week. And um, everybody be safe out there. And happy Mother's Day and happy Mother's Day. I'm honored to do these classes. I absolutely love it. Uh, have a good day, everybody. Bye.